few more examples of looking at our, our logarithmic equations. And this one's a little bit tougher than the previous ones. So we have log three of x, log three of x minus eight equals two. Now this one's different th than the previous example that we looked at in the last video um, for a couple of reasons. But one of which is remember that we had one logarithm base on both sides, right? This time we don't have that, right? So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to use one of our log rules. And you probably remember that we have this rule, log of m n base b is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. And what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards and we're going to write that as a single logarithm. So notice that we have two of these log base threes and we're going to multiply these. So that's going to be log base three of x quantity x minus eight is equal to two. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch this into the exponential form. So remember, a logarithm is an exponent. Here is our base 3. Here is our exponent 2. And so now this turns into x. x minus 8 is going to be equal to 3 squared. We're going to distribute the x, and we're also going to go ahead and square out the 3. And so we get x squared minus 8x equals 9. And now we have a quadratic. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a quadratic equal to zero. Anytime we have a quadratic, we have to set it to zero to try to solve it. So we have x squared minus 8x minus 9 equals zero. Now we're going to factor the trinomial. So when we factor this, to build x squared, we get x times x. To build 9, it's either 3 and 3 or 9 and 1. We're going to use 9 and 1 because that's going to get us closer to 8. And to get negative 8, we should probably have negative 9 and positive 1. Okay. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set both of these factors to 0. So we have x minus 9 is 0, and then x plus 1 is 0. And so our answers, or our proposed answers, are going to be 9 and negative 1. All right? But we have to make sure that we check our solutions, because remember, um, unfortunately, logarithms have domain restrictions. All right, so let's start with nine, okay? And all I'm gonna do is just substitute back into the parentheses parts. And so we have log base three of nine plus log base three of nine minus eight equals two. And what that would give us is if we simplify it, log three of nine, plus log three of one equals two, all right? And notice that both of the numbers inside are less or greater than zero, okay? So this is where we check x equals nine, all right? So it looks like x equals nine is gonna be a good solution. Okay? Let's check x equal negative one. And if we check that, that means we get log base three of negative one, um, plus log base three of negative one minus eight equals two. And we could stop right here because this number obviously is going to be less than zero. So right, right away that tells us that that negative one is not part of the solution set. So the only solution to this is going to be nine. Okay. Another example, <clears throat> very similar to the previous, we have log base two of x, log base two of x plus two equals log base two of x plus six. Um, similar to the previous example, we have to multiply these logs together, right, to get them into a single log. So we're gonna get log base two of x, x plus two is gonna be equal to log base two of x plus six. And then notice that both sides have the same base of a logarithm of two, and so, Technically, we could just go ahead and raise both sides and make both sides have a base of two. Um, that's going to cancel out these logs. But technically, what's going on is we have both of those as a base of two. And remember, there's that rule that if you have log b raised to the log b of x, you just get x. All right. So realistically, this just turns into x. x plus two is going to be equal to x plus six. Right? We're going to distribute. And that's going to give us x squared plus 2x is going to be equal to x plus 6. 
And now it's a quadratic again, so we're going to subtract x and we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So we get x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, so the 2 and the, and the x, these are just going to simplify down to a positive x, the negative 6, and then over here that cancels out and we're left with 0. Once again, we're going to factor. Okay? So we need to build x squared. To build 6, we need a 3 and a 2 or a 6 and a 1 probably three and two because we need a positive one in the middle. So that's three and two. And the correct signs are going to be positive three and negative two. So that gives us two proposed solutions, one of which is going to be when x plus three equals zero, the other of which is when x minus two is going to be equal to zero. Or two solutions are going to be negative three and positive two. Now, Let's again check to make sure that these make sense. So we go all the way back to the beginning. Let's start by substituting negative three back in. Okay, so we're gonna check x equals negative three. And I think right away we can see that that one's not gonna work. So we would get log base two of negative three and we could stop here. Okay, so this is less than zero. So right away, we know that that's not going to be part of the solution set. So let's try two. And it looks like 2 is going to work for us, okay? So we're going to get log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of x plus 2 is going to be equal to log base 2 of 2 plus 6. And when we simplify that, um, clearly all the numbers are going to be bigger than 0. Log base 2 of 2, log base 2 of 4, and then that's going to be equal to log base 2 of 8. All right, so all of those numbers inside are greater than 0, and so it looks like that 2 is going to be our only solution to this logarithmic equation. All right, so only answer in the solution set is 2. One final example, um, we have this natural log of x, minus, x plus 5 equals natural log of x minus 1 minus natural log of x plus 1. Now, this one's a little bit sneakier, um, not just because of the natural log, because now we have a minus sign. So we are going to combine this into a single log, but we're going to have to divide this time. So we're going to have natural log of x plus 5. It's going to be equal to ln of x plus 1 over x minus 1, or x minus 1 over x plus 1, excuse me. All right, so let me erase this. All right, so that's going to be natural log of x minus 1 over x plus 1. Now, because both sides have the same log, we could technically cancel these out. What's really happening is we're raising both sides with a base of e, all right? And e's and ln's would undo each other. So we're left with this algebraic equation, x plus 5 equals x minus 1 over x plus 1. What I'm going to do now is multiply both sides through by x plus 1, all right? So um, I want to try to clear out the denominator just like I would with any sort of equation that has a fraction in it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 1. And that's going to yield a little bit uglier equation, but not a little bit too terrible. So we would get x plus 1, x plus 5 equals x minus 1. On the left-hand side, we are going to now foil out the two binomials. Okay, so first, outer, inner, last. And so that's going to be x squared plus 5x plus 1x. And then plus 5 is equal to x minus 1. And then now what we could do is we could subtract an x from both sides. And we could also add 1 to both sides. All right, so these x's are going to cancel out. Um, and then we're going to end, and the ones would cancel out. So it looks like we're going to be left with x squared plus 5x plus 5 plus 1, which is 6 equals 0. Okay. Now we can factor, okay? Or you could use your quadratic formula, whichever you prefer. I'm just going to factor it just because it's easier. It looks like x plus 3, x plus 2 is going to give us what we need out of this, okay? Because 3 and 2 multiply to 6, but also 3 plus 2 is going to add up to 5 in the middle. And so our two proposed solutions are going to be when x plus 3 is 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, or x is going to be negative 3, x is going to be negative 2. Now, 
we have to substitute those back into the original equation, all right? Um, and it looks like that we're actually going to get a new solution out of this, okay? Just because the um, this x minus 1, all right? But let's just verify it. So we're going to check when x is equal to negative 3 first, all right? So we would get ln of negative 3 plus 5, that's okay, equals ln of negative 3 minus 1. Now, that's not okay. Okay, because that would be a negative four, which is clearly less than zero. All right, so negative three is not part of the solution set. And when we check x equal negative two, that's going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to have ln of negative two plus five, and that's okay because that would give us a three, equals ln of negative two minus one. That's not good. All right, so unfortunately, there is no solution to this logarithmic equation. Okay, so we would say no solution, or we could just write the zero with a slash through it for the null set, right? So that's how we solve our logarithmic equations, all right? So um, it's a pretty dense topic, all right? So I recommend that we go back, watch the, maybe watch the videos again, just to make sure we understand all the algebra and the techniques going on with this before we move on to being able to use the applications.